it's time to demystify the eras of vintage postcards. You know, you're on eBay trying to list your vintage postcard and you're in the item specifics and it says era and there's all these sort of esoteric things like divided back, undivided back, chrome, linen, and there's years next to them. Well, here's what it all means. Hey friends, before we dive into postcards, I just want to say sorry for the gap between videos here. First of all, I actually already recorded this video like a week ago and then the file got corrupted or I did something bad, I'm not sure. So I'm doing it again. And secondly, um, I just got really busy with personal life stuff and it's kind of weird because that doesn't usually happen and it's not bad stuff. It's good personal life stuff, but I just got really busy. So my apologies. I'm going to get back on the video train. Don't worry. All right. Postcards. So you're listing a vintage postcard and you get on down to this section and eBay starts asking you all these awkward questions. And one of them is type and it wants to know if it's a it basically wants to know if it's printed or a real photo, but it also wants to know if it's leather or metal or silk or wood, which most of the time it really isn't. And I'm going to talk about printed and real photo in another video. I think I've talked about it before, but I'll do another video just about that because it's an issue that befuddles and frustrates many, I believe. Um, they also want to know the era, and that's what this video is about. Region, you know how to do. Country, you know how to do, or you can leave that blank. Postage conditions, really easy. Just is it posted or unposted? Generally, you know, does it have a stamp and some writing and a postmark on the back? Then it's posted. If not, it's some degree of unposted. Um, features, we'll talk about again in another video, but these are less likely. These are kind of your fancy postcards that have special features, but I'll show you what all those are in another video. And these are just, you know, the things you deal with on eBay listings. So let's go back and look at era because that's what we're going to talk about. So here are the choices and each one represents a date range as well as to some degree, a type of postcard or technology or a trend. And it's a little confusing because these things overlap, but we'll try to sort it out as best possible. And to aid and abet us in this quest, I have taken a screenshot of that list and stuck it over here so we can refer to it without coming back to this page all the time. Just ignore that tool tip. Anyway, so let's begin at the beginning. Pre-postcard, 1848 to 1870. Now, the thing with pre-postcards is that they aren't really the kind of postcards you're thinking of that are like a picture with a writing on the back and a stamp and all that. Pre-postcards are really just any sort of single card piece of paper type thing that's not in an envelope and has a stamp on it and was sent during this era. So it's kind of a, well, it's a pre-postcard. It's not a real postcard. Um, it was just sort of an innovation that people took it upon themselves to make, to jot off quick notes without an envelope, put a stamp on it and send it through the mail. But around 1868, um, the government decided to make it official and the U.S. Congress passed a bill that privately printed cards weighing one ounce or less could in fact be sent through the mail officially. And one fellow named Charlton or possibly Carlton copyrighted the first private postcard in the U.S. And so these are the kind of things that people sent during the pre-postcard era. And 
I'm not even going to show them to you because I don't really count them as postcards and I don't even think they belong necessarily in the postcard category on eBay. They're more like postal history and that's a whole different kettle of fish. So you're not going to just run across them all the time unless you're looking. So let's just check off pre-postcard from our list of things to care about at the moment and move on to pioneer postcards. So in 1870, the, these uh, sort of like official printed postcards were going strong and another guy, Lipman, reissued Charlton's postcards under the name Lipman's Postal Cards. And in 1872, the U.S. government got in on the action and they issued their own pre-printed postcards and by pre-printed I mean they had the postage already on them same as we have today and after 1873 the government decided that these were the only ones that could actually say postal card on them and they cost one cent whereas the ones that private publishers were making cost two cents to mail and you had to put a stamp on them. So pioneer postcards, again, you're not going to find a ton of unless you're looking, but here's the sort of thing they are. They're more like this, like business correspondence, less like the kind of postcard you are used to seeing in a greeting sort of way. So here's an official US one that has the stamp built in. And this is what's on the back. It's sort of, you know, business form. And here's another one, very similar. And again, this is a different design, but same idea with the pre-printed government stuff on it. So you can mail it for a penny. And these are some other ones. And you can see that these aren't, this whole big lot is priced at $15. It's not these aren't super rare or super desirable. I mean, you could find cool ones that have more to them, but for the most part, it's not really where you're going to make the big bucks in the postcards for the most part. So we can check off Pioneer from 1870 to 1898 and move on to the private mailing card from 1898 to 1907. And this is where we start to get into postcards more as we know them. So in 1898, the government decided that private printing companies could make postcards that said private mailing card authorized by Act of Congress, May 19th, 1898. So that's where you get the private mailing card thing. That's what they had to say on them. And they lowered the price back down to one cent, like the government ones, but the fact that it had the words uh, private mailing card on them told you it wasn't a government one. You couldn't write on the side where the address went, except for the address. But on the other side, you could have whatever you wanted and it became the Vogue to have pictures. And you could write on the picture, under the picture, around the picture. And a lot of times they were designed to have some space so that you could cram in some words with your picture. So that would be one side, and then the other side usually said something like this side exclusively for the address or something like that. And here's what these look like. So here's one. It's a picture. It has some nice white space to write on. And then on the other side, we have private mailing card authorized by Act of Congress of May 19th, 1898, and this side for address only. That's that's textbook what it looks like you can write your address on the side you can't write on and uh, you can write whatever you want on this side here is another one this one they've taken advantage of the white space to cram in a message but on the other side it's just the address here's another one um, this one doesn't have a picture it's just blank on this side so you can actually write a significant amount, but you can only write the address on this side. 
So those are all private mailing cards. They were only around for a pretty short amount of time. If they say on them also postal card and carte postale, let's see if any of these do. Yeah, this one does. That means that they could also be mailed internationally. Kind of overlapping here is what they call the undivided back era. So undivided back era starts in 1901 to 1907. So as you can see, it overlaps with private mailing cards except for 1898 to 1900. And the difference is that in 1901, the government of the U.S. made a new law that said that you could have your postcard say postcard instead of private mailing card, and you no longer had to put the thing about the 1898 Act of Congress, but you still couldn't write on the address side except for the address. And again, the front usually had a picture which you could write on or around, and here are some examples of these. So the difference is that it says postcard instead of private mailing card. This one happens to be a real photo and this is what the back looks like on those often, but we're not talking about that today. <laughs> and here's another one. This is kind of a photo slash design thing. And here's what the back looks like here. This one is European, obviously, and that doesn't matter. It's still an undivided back because it says postcard. Actually, does it say postcard? It says cart postal. That's close enough. If it were American, it would say postcard, obviously. And here's another one. So this one, again, somebody's written on the border and it says postcard and has just this side for the address. So if you find a card that's, that says private mailing card, then it's definitely from 1898 to 1907. And if you find one that has no line down the back in the middle, thus an undivided back, and it says postcard, then it's in the subset of that 1901 to 1907. So you can tell those by the backs. And now things get slightly more complicated. <laughs> so the next era, according to eBay, and generally according to collectors and people who talk about old postcards, is the divided back era. And this can be confusing because postcards from then on had divided backs, and they still do. So anything from 1907 up to the present day is going to probably have a divided back. But in this case, it refers to a specific period of 1907 to 1915, give or take a little, in the, in the newer direction. And it's just how collectors and sellers differentiate what era it's from. So you might start in this, looking at these to start checking the postmark and handwritten dates that are on the cards to get an idea for the approximate era. Though of course, always remember that you can mail a postcard a hundred years after it was made. So the postmark, isn't and the date you write on it is not necessarily a golden key to went to its date so let's look at these and talk some more about them here's what the back looks like on a divided back that is a terrible photo i'm afraid i'm sorry if this is your listing but it's not a very good photo it happens to us all all right let's look at another one like okay here's a divided back this side is for correspondence this side is for address only and that's the gist of it. They're all like this. They might not say this necessarily, but they have some kind of dividing line down the middle. In fact, in 1907, it was decided internationally by members of the Universal Postal Congress 
that government postcards of member nations could have messages on the left and the address on the right. And so this is a pretty universal thing. And at this point, it's known as the golden age of postcards, and they were extremely popular, which has to do with why you can still find a ton of 100 to 110-ish year old postcards. They're just all over the place. This is these divided back ones. Now, a thing to help you identify them besides the divided back and the postmark and the possible date is the look. So there are ones that are illustrations, there are ones that are pictures, but they have a certain look and you'll get used to it eventually. Like this is a European one, but this illustration is kind of indicative of the era. It's not quite Victorian and it's not quite 20s, though it's really getting there. It's kind of like this like throwback Victorian sweetness in this illustration, but it's getting a little bit more modern and more graphic in terms of like, you know, big flat areas of color, less fussy, etc. And let's see. So here's one. This is typical of the era again, and it's the sort of post-Victorian Art Nouveau in the typography and even in the, the drippy swirliness of the flowers and the frame and stuff. There's so many so many like this all sorts of designs and then here's a divided back postcard that's a photo and again this is typical of this era this kind of quality to the photos so it's a photo but it was taken in black and white and then it was colorized not hand colored per se though those do exist on a you know on an individual basis but it was hand colored before it was printed in mass quantity so it has this quality of flat color where you see the shadows from the black and white postcard coming through but it's not really in the color if that makes any sense um again like you can sort of see this is just a swath of green but there's shadow in the black and white photo that gives it some dimension so it's this kind of like realistic, but not totally realistic feel. It's realistic in that it is started as a photo, but unrealistic in that the color is not super lifelike. And oftentimes there are areas like in here that are not even colorized. So there's just like black and white photo bits in the in this color picture even like some of these details in here they haven't bothered to color like you see these trolleys that are just white black and white so this is very characteristic of the era and will help you to identify these and here's another one same thing this is again a divided back and you can see that quality of the color this one is um it's probably like an alber type or something so it's printed with a different kind of dot pattern, these big chunky dots, but that's sort of neither here nor there. It's still originally a black and white photo that has had color added to it and then it's been printed and it gives it that kind of realistic but not totally realistic quality where like there's something very painterly to this water. It doesn't really look like a photograph of water and same with the sky and you know, these sort of flat areas. So that's another example. And I think I have another one queued up. Yep, here's another one. Here's another one. This is another divided back. And if you look at it closely, it's the same sort of thing where it's a black and white photo. And they haven't even bothered with this boat, for example. Actually, most of these boats are just not colored and especially the stays, which would be really hard to get into without taking a lot of time and really fine brushes and it would still look kind of messy. They just didn't bother. And there's this sort of painterly water and painterly sky and painterly mountains. And even in the rocks, it looks like a hybrid of a photo and a painting. And indeed, that's sort of what it is. So that's another example. And I think we're moving on to the next topic now. 
Oh, no, here's one more. Okay, so again, <laughs> this is a divided back, and this has the same kind of quality where it's a black and white photo, like this guy's suit, and some color has been added for that kind of quaint, kind of quasi-realistic feeling. So that's what to look for besides the divided back. And, you know, like typography like this is very typical of the era, but not necessarily confined only to the era. So moving along, that's what divided backs are all about from 1907 to 1915. And then the next period is white border from 1915 to 1930. Now, these are going to still have a divided back because they do from about 1907 on, but these are slightly different in technology and quality. So here's a white border card, and this is absolutely typical of what they look like. What the deal is, is that before World War I, postcards were mostly printed in Germany and Europe, and... Of course, when World War I started, they stopped being imported, and in the U.S. anyway, we had to print them ourselves, and the technology wasn't really as good as it was in Germany, who had long been innovators in printing, in fact, home of the first printing press in the West. So generally, these aren't as well done and the popularity of postcards did decrease a little at the time as well. The most important characteristic is that they have a white border. Now other cards also have white borders but this is characteristic of this era specifically and the white border is actually a cost cutting measure. So you can see when you look at this that the quality is different than in the divided back era. This actually kind of looks like an illustration or a photo that has been so degraded by the half toning process that it no longer looks like a photo. I think this is actually an illustration. It might be some kind of hybrid. It, it looks even less realistic than the ones we were just looking at. So to compare, see this kind of looks photorealistic even though the color is painterly. This doesn't. This looks kind of like a draftsmanly illustration or some kind of messed up photo. <laughs> and you can see the dots are huge. This printing is just not as good. This paper is a little cheaper. It doesn't, it, it's got a harder quality to it. Not necessarily heavier, but it's a little bit, it's very Bristol board like, if you know what that is. And so the printing just is not as good as it was previously. Same same kind of back, though the typography starts to update a bit. Here's another one. Again, has a white border. It has this sort of like very roughly screened uh, photograph that's been hand colored in a rather slapdash way. <laughs> the sand is pink. The sky is blue. These are white border cards. They're not the most prevalent, like you'll find more earlier and later, but they are around and there are some cool ones. Here's another one. This again, it has this sort of weird illustration quality and really big printing dots and a white border. And they, they always or almost always have a caption on the front somewhere, either in the border or on the picture to tell you what they are. Here's the what the back looks like. This clearly was not mailed because it does not have an address and they have written on the wrong side. So white borders, uh, 1915 to 1930. Think of them World War One plus era. All right, moving forward. The next, the next innovation was the linen postcard from 1930 to 1945. But in fact, these are actually made and used much longer than 1945, like into the 60s. Just use this designation if your card is linen. Linen cards look like this. 
and there was a change in the makeup of the paper that they used to make postcards and they added more rag content which is um, like recycled fibers from cotton and they added this ribbed finish it's also called a laid finish or linen finish and it's basically this plaid you're seeing that's the paper it's not the printing it's actual texture in the paper and if you were to hold this in your hand and scratch it with your fingernail it would kind of have a texture and make a little sound whereas none of the other kinds of postcards would do these linen cards with this new paper technology actually could be printed with much brighter inks that would retain their color and they started to have more of this look you see these bright reds and the yellows and the green with like the grass green and even the this uh, beige in the in the road it's it's all much more vibrant than in the earlier eras yeah they tend to have this kitschy to us look this 30s 40s 50s thing that at the moment in our current zeitgeist of culture feels a little kitschy and that's that's how i would define their look they um have a divided back again often though not always the captions on the back now and sometimes there's stuff on the front like this one has both here's another one if we zoom in you can see that plaid texture in here and it's the same general look it's kind of cute i guess you might say and the colors are more vibrant this green and this blue and this green down here this chartreuse color and they again backs are like this see this one has a white border but it's still a linen card look at that texture it's totally linen <laughs> so don't be fooled if a linen card has a white border it's still linen and of course these were cheaper to make and also it's kind of an aesthetic thing and you know who even thinks about it yeah here's a linen card Here's the back. It has like kind of an advertising thing going on. And that is the story of linen from 1930 to 1945 and beyond. Our next era, and this, this is the easiest one, is the chrome era. And that's short for photochrome. And these are just every common card you see today in every gift shop. They're just like every postcard you've ever sent and you know and love. And you get in every souvenir stand they are generally though not always they are generally photographs that have been offset printed so they look photorealistic they have realistic color they can also be black and white and they can also be illustrations not photographs but the key is that they are offset printed in the modern manner here's one from I don't know 60s or 70s so it has this old-fashioned look but it's still a chrome it's just it's just the color makes you lets you know it's from the 70s back is just like they have been for a while yep this is like your a number one typical everyday postcard it's got a photo it's got some type and a area of solid color but it's it's a chrome and the back is like you would expect it to be so chrome 1939 to present essentially they started making them as the technology evolved and became cheap enough during world war ii and have been making them ever since <laughs> chrome will encompass many many postcards you find and they don't have to be photos they can be you know those art reproductions you get at museums or even illustrations or advertisements or anything but they are made during this time period and they're not linen it's kind of a process of elimination thing and they're not the white border style or the divided back style and they don't have an undivided back so they're chromes and that is how to figure out what era your postcard is from. I hope very much that that was helpful and that you can now date your postcards with more 
of a relaxed joie de vivre. <laughs> Please do hit the like button and subscribe if you feel inspired to, and thank you and take care. Thank you.